Our Races United, by a history long forgotten and a future we shall face together. I am Optimus Prime, and I send this message so that our past will always be remembered, for in those memories, we live on. Here's your look at the new 3-0, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, DLX Optimus Prime. Hasbro and 3-0 are thrilled to present the Optimus Prime from the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen film as their next figure in the Transformers DLX collectible figure series. At 11.2 inches tall, the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen DLX Optimus Prime collectible figure features approximately 57 points of articulation, a die-cast metal frame, and LED illuminated eyes. Accessories include two ion blasters, dual energon swords, and an interchangeable battle mask and face. A total of four pairs of interchangeable hands and a DLX action stand for various expressive poses. Before we get a closer look at the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Optimus Prime, let me first send out a big thank you to the folks over at 3.0 who provided the sample of Optimus Prime that we could have a look at in this video. Let's go ahead and grab the ruler just to figure out how tall Prime actually stands. And if I'm looking at this correctly, the figure stands 11 and 3 quarters of an inch tall or about 30 centimeters in height. Like with other Transformers that we've looked at from 3.0, Optimus Prime comes included with a really elaborate and articulated display stand. I'll have a look at that first. Grabbing the display stand so you can see, it's all molded here in black plastic, but again, the intricacies of the sculpting is so nice on these display stands. We have gotten these before, but what may be changed here, though, is the fact that they have printed on Transformers Revenge of the Fallen down below. It is of a hollow makeup. You can see the bottom of the display stand here, and it does require some assembly. You have to take the adjustable neck and snap it into this point here and this section right here as well. As I said, it does have an adjustable feature to it, so you can bring the display stand neck forward, or you can also arch it further back. To lock it in place in any one of the little notches provided down below, all you do is just drop down the little switch, and that locks everything in place. You can also then as well extend the neck out. You can hear a nice ratcheted joint while doing it. And again, that locks things in place until you press the button on the back that will allow it then to retract back down into the cavity of the main neck piece. This attaches to Optimus Prime. You have to take then the figure and spin it around. And located on the back, it's sort of hard, hard to see with all the very intricate detailing that they did sculpt in place here. But just on the back bottom section here, there's a removable piece just sort of remove it in between the two wheels here and then you can then take the adjustable stand and you can plug it onto the back of Optimus Prime. I'm just going to do this right now so you guys can see. Oh, one last thing also I wanted to point out too with the display stand. Just get Prime to stand here for a second. Is that you can also take this part of the display stand and pop it out. So as it stands right now, it's locked in place in a lower configuration. To bring it up, you don't just turn it. In fact, you actually have to pop it out, bring it up to the desired level that you want it and then slide it from there back in place. And then from there, go back to Optimus Prime. And going back to that hole we looked at earlier, that just plugs into the back of the display stand. It's a little harder just being the fact that there's so much more that you have to kind of get around. But once that's locked in place, you actually have can you can actually have yourself Optimus Prime, well, not so much floating off the display, sh display stand, but at least if you wanted to put him in a more dynamic pose, like say if he's leaping in the air, firing off one of his ion cannons, you can do that thanks to the folks over at 3.0 providing the display stand with the figure. Suppose while we are on the topic of assembly, Optimus Prime does require a little bit himself. Included inside the packaging when you first remove the figure, these side doors are things that have to be assembled to the figure and it's super easy. Just grabbing again the figure and located on either side of his torso. You can see very obvious ball joints sticking out. Take the doors and have them, of course, in a way that the, the mirror, the side mirror of the door will be facing this way. So we'll go ahead and just, if you flip it around to the back, you can kind of see there's the socket. And that's going to just plug onto the ball joints. While doing this, though, just be careful that you're not putting pressure against those side mirrors for the risk that they may potential, potentially snap. You can see once you put them in place, being the fact that they are sitting on ball joints, those can even articulate as well. I think that's really neat the way they've done that. 
Again, do the exact same thing on the other side. Careful of those side mirrors. It even helps as well if you kind of grab it from the top and just push it down that way. There we go. Very little force is really required to get those mirrors in place, those side doors in place. But once those are in place, you can actually articulate them to get them to your desired look. Optimus Prime features not only two swappable mouth plates, but also features LED light-up eyes as well. To gain access to both, I find it's just the easiest to go in there and grab Optimus Prime's head with a little bit of force. You can remove then the ball joint from the ball socket on his neck. And there's the head sculpt right there. Let's go ahead and put the decapitated body of Prime down for one second. We'll go back to that in a second, but let's get a closer look at the head sculpt. As I said, there are two different ways of displaying the figure, one with the mouth and one the more preferred look, myself at least, is the one that has the shield across his face, just because it looks more like classic Prime. In both the cases, sadly, I have one real glaring issue when it comes to the head sculpt. If it does look a little incomplete to you, almost as if the bottom of Prime's face has been removed, that's because unfortunately it has. On the bottom of the head sculpt, you can see that there's a slotted part right there that's supposed to accommodate an extra chin piece. The chin attaches just to the bottom. The, the idea is you're supposed to remove the chin before you remove the faceplate. Then go ahead and put the chin piece back in when you get the desired look that you want. But in both the cases, you have to remove it. And when I did receive this in the mail, that part was actually just loose inside the packaging. I wasn't sure right away what it was attached to or wh where it was supposed to belong. But it's supposed to go right, right here. And I'm not sure why 3-0 decided, decided to have that be a separate piece when I think they could have easily just attached a chin piece to both the mouth mouthpieces instead of actually having it be something that's removed. It's dropped off several times prior to hitting the record button, and unfortunately now its whereabouts are unknown, resulting in the bottom of Optimus Prime's face looking slightly incomplete. To change out, though, the face plates. This is, again, the one that has the closed mouth, if you want to have it looking as if Prime could talk. But if you want to change it, just remove the sides of his helmet, do the exact same thing on the other side. Careful, though, that you're not going to lose these. And if you reach underneath, right here, let's see if you can actually see it. Right there, see there's a little ledge. This is the mouthpiece. And then you can see right down below, that's where the chin was supposed to go. Again, I'm not sure why they just didn't keep the piece here. I guess the reasoning why was it was a lot easier to go in there and gain access to the face. But then why wouldn't they have made like the chin part as part of the face that you're going to remove? Anyways, get your finger in there. And very carefully, just put your finger into the corner of it, and you can completely remove Optimus Prime's lower face. Again, while you're doing this, just be careful that you don't drop the piece onto the floor, because again, like these pieces are so small. Go ahead and then remove the mouthpiece, and that's what it looks like without the mouth. And then for my preferred look, you can go ahead then and take the one that has the shield for the mouth guard, and that goes in front of his face instead. Again, this is the way I prefer it between the two. Just make sure it's completely in there as well. You would certainly not want to lose that. And I guess certainly while we also have this in place without the sides already back attached, we can go ahead and gain access to the batteries. The batteries are located here on the back. Just get your finger behind right above this open hole area. Just grab your finger and just remove that completely. Unfortunately, one of the downsides of this particular Prime is that there's no button on the front where you can activate the lights without having first to remove the top of the helmet. Once it's removed, you can see there's the button right there. And you go ahead and press that. That turns on Optimus Prime's eyes. Now, the head sculpt does require AG-13 batteries that weren't included with my release, or the one that I got. So I did have to go out and buy them. Fairly inexpensive to replace. But I was surprised, actually, to find that they were using AG-13 batteries, because AG-13 tends to be a very large battery. And in fact, it was. It takes two inside. And then once that's on, you can go ahead and then take the top of the helmet and just snap it back into place just like that. Still, I wish that there was an actual on and off switch on the front, so you didn't have to do this every single time. And then from there, once you've got the desired look that you want, go ahead and just put the sides back onto his face. There we go. And you've got yourself an almost completed Optimus Prime. Again, the only thing that's missing is the bottom chin piece. But in both the cases, you didn't have to, well, you had to remove it to gain access to it, but still I feel like they could have put the chin as part of the already mouth plate that you replace, so you don't have to worry about removing it every single time and running the risk of losing it, like unfortunately I did. For the rest of Prime's accessories, he comes included with a pair of dual Energon swords. The swords appear to be identical to one another, featuring some nice Cybertronian scripture not only on the blade further down, 
but closer to also the garden hilt, there's some additional scripture there added as well. Using some nice translucent orange plastic and dark, rich gunmetal gray paint for the tops of it. These fit actually into the sides of his forearms. Fairly easy, in fact. Picking the figure up. If you look to the side of Prime's arms, just to the side here, you see these little open slots. Take the dedicated blade and make sure that when you're sliding in place, you're putting pressure here and not putting pressure here for, again, the risk of breaking the plastic. But they slot in pretty easily. In fact, I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. See the little slot right there? Holding on to Prime's arms, go ahead and take the blade and just slide it into those open grooves. Super easy to do. One of the other accessories he comes included with as well, if you prefer your Prime with a little more firepower, then the figure comes included with two versions of the Ion Blaster. Two versions in the sense that they are identical to one another, except for this one does have the additional arm piece that's supposed to replicate the way it morphs from the side of his arm. Uh, it is removable, by the way, so if you did want them identical to one another, you simply just go in there and just below this part, kind of the exhaust pipe, just go in there and just reach for it and pull it down. You can see how it slots down below. And once that's removed, again, they appear to be identical to one another, making use of, again, some really nice dark gunmetal gray with some additional silver for accents as well as gold. They're really nice additional blasters they can have in Prime's hands. Now, these don't slot to the sides of his form, similar to what we did with earlier with the dual Energon swords. In fact, actually, these clap onto, clasp onto the dedicated hands that go along with them. You can see he does have trigger-firing hands. Fairly difficult, I have to admit, to get onto his, the actual blasters. You sort of have to get them pried in between. So, so when you are putting them in, see how there's Prime's thumb right there? You kind of have to get the handle around the thumb area, like that. And then sort of just navigate the hands around until you get them close enough around the handle area. This may take a couple of tries to do it, but once it's in place, you can see it perfectly lines up to Prime's hands. And in fact, the trigger finger lines up perfectly to the trigger on the side of the blaster. And then from there, you're going to go ahead, grab the figure once again, just remove the blades because we don't need those right now. And we're going to go ahead and also and remove the hand. Because, of course, we're going to want to replace that with the new hand. Pop that out. And then pop the new hand in place. Just wiggle that onto the ball joint. Careful while you are doing this. Of course, just because you're dealing with a ball joint. And that just plugs into place. Just like that. Now, you still can go ahead and take, then, the guard area. But I find it helps easiest if you do and replace the hand first. Pop the hand in place with the blaster. And then from there... Just take the side guard and line it up to that slot. And providing you got this twisted just the right way, it's not too difficult to get then the guard in place. Maybe helps just a little bit if I put Prime down for one second. Again, slots that into place. We'll just actually take the hand off in the process. And then we'll just put the hand back in place. There you go. You can see how the guard then wraps around to the side of his arm, similar to what he would have had in the movie. So there's that option available. Or again, if you wanted just to display it without the guard, you can do that and then replicate the in the other blaster, which attaches to the other arm exactly the same way. While we are on the topic of Prime's hands, let's look at the four interchangeable hands that come included with the figure. Starting first, stock out of the packaging when you first get this guy. He's going to come included with a pair of closed fists. I admit, not the most exciting of hands to be using with Prime, considering all the other things he comes included with, but if you wanted to have him throwing a few punches, he certainly comes included with these. And in all the cases, you may see also as well, nicely painted on 3-0's part, not only painting initially in that gunmetal gray, but dry brushing over top of it some much-needed silver as well. It comes included with those. We've already looked at these. We can bring these back in as well. He comes included with trigger firing hands for, of course, holding the ion blasters that we looked at earlier. The figure also comes included with a pair of relaxed hands. And I'm all for the idea of relaxed hands to come include with figures because, after all, if you did want to put the figure just in it with his arm, one arm down, for example, and him holding the blaster in the other, relaxed hands always come nicely and handy. And, of course, you can see the very nice detail work that they've sculpted in. Sculpting in each of the serviceable knuckles that would allow Prime to move his fingers. Really nice looking hands. If you want slightly more gestured versions of those same hands, he also comes with a pair of these as well. Now, one, while none of these are articulated, they certainly look as if they could be, the way that they've sculpted each of the individual knuckle joints. Again, some really nice sharp paint added to each one of them. 
Having run through the accessories and the features of the Autobot leader, we can now spend some time and talk about the actual figure of Prime himself. This now marks, for me at least, the second Prime in my collection from 3.0, the other one being from Transformers Bumblebee, which was very much more rooted in his Generation 1 design. Still, while I like that design of Prime, there's something still classic about the way that Prime looked from the original Bayverse movies. And if we spin this around, you can see the level of detailing that 3.0 managed to incorporate into the robot itself. There's surprisingly a lot of movable parts on this that I'll do my best to talk about when we talk about the articulation. We already looked at the doors, but like for example, the front end of its torso, Prime allows that to be able to move as well because he does have those ball joints on the inside. Again, I'll do my best to try to cover off everything, but first let's spin the figure around so you can see it from, again, all the sides to see the pistons and pulleys and all the things that allow the robot to move his body. One thing I will say as a testament to 3.0 is the paintwork on these guys are phenomenal. Looking at, for example, the metallic blue, they've managed to not only add the flame effects, but also scratch in some additional silver to add some wear and tear. It always perplexed me the fact that in these movies, when they were in their robot mode, they always looked like their paintwork was scuffed up. And yet, when they transformed into their alternate modes, their alternate modes always looked pristine and clean, like they just got the car finished and painted. But the paintwork on this piece is quite incredible, to the point where when you're looking at it, you can really understand how these parts would move together and fold together to create a truck that we would see in the movie. Even to the point where you can see like the headlights down below here, lower onto his torso. Again, you've got some nice gold and metallic blue added in there. The flame effects added here to the side of his forearms, even to the point where they make it brighter and more off-colored. I guess that would be the resulting of him carrying around his ion blasters that maybe would have faded the paint a little bit. But you can see as well, there's some riveted points that they've painted in there with some additional silver. It really does add a more realism to this robot, which is surprising to say that because, of course, Optimus Prime would have been all generated with computers. Just, again, the level of detail that they were able to incorporate into this figure is absolutely phenomenal. Now, he does have the tires here on the side, some of which don't move, actually. Some of the tires at the top do have ball joints, so you can move those back and forth. But some of the ones are a little more staction as you get further down on the figure. Again, the work that they put into the piece, much larger, bulkier legs on Prime. Again, all are, are all tic articulate, which we'll talk more about in a second. You can articulate the legs and you can move those back and forth. But even does have tires here on the side that are also articulated on ball joints. Again, I'm going to do my best to cover off all the articulation on the figure in a second. But just again, an incredible piece produced by 3.0. Even though I do really like the Bumblebee ver version of Optimus Prime, just because again, it looks more like classic Prime from the Generation 1 days, there's something still quite remarkable about the design of the original Bayverse Optimus Prime. And again, short of the fact that he is missing his chin, which is again, one thing I wish the figure could have done differently. Uh, it's not too obvious here while looking at the head sculpt. At least I don't see it as much. When I did have the mouthpiece in place, I did notice that the mouth looked, or the face looked a little more squatter. I find it doesn't look as bad, although I still notice it now that the chin part is missing. But overall, it's still a great looking Optimus Prime produced by 3.0. Let's have a look at the articulation on the figure. Apologies in advance if there's points of posability that I leave off here. Something just being able to remember everything that's on Prime can be difficult. Where I'm doing my best. I'm going to do my best. We're going to start first with this head sculpt. It is on a ball joint, so you can rotate it back and forth this way and also up and down. Just by the nature of how much bulk he has on the back of his head sculpt will make it pretty difficult to be able to rotate the head all the way around. But you can certainly still move it back and forth this way, up and also down. The figure also possesses at the base of his neck a secondary ball joint that allows the head to lunge forward. So say, for example, you want to have Prime mourning the loss of his Autobots, you can do that. Or if you want to have him in a flight look, you can actually bring the neck up as well. If there's that option as well, if you want to. Uh, when we look at the torso, for example, he does have, of course, the posability on the doors. We already had to install, install those when we take them out of the packaging. And then the front cap section of his torso, these are also on ball joints. You can move those back and forth too. Further down on his waist, he does also have these side sections of his headlights that also are serviceable on ball joints too. And that sort of helps as well when it comes to taking the top torso of the figure and being able to have the figure lunging forward. You sort of do want to move these out of the way just in case that they do break off. I'm glad to see that they did make these poseable to allow Optimus Prime's torso to lunge forward like this. Let's straighten up the torso. Onto the side of his arms, his shoulders are also on, on hinges, so you can bring those out. Just be careful when you are hinging them too, that you see these tanks on either side. If you bring this up, I've noticed that this tank is prone to popping off over this one right here. They're fairly easy, in fact. Not that I really want to remove it right now to show you guys, but it basically it's just 
it's pegged in place. It's basically like a little clamp that clamps on top of just further up from the shoulder. So again, if you are moving this back and forth and this pops off in the process, first of all, these are hingeable, but popping them back in place is pretty easy. Again, you're just going to pop, snap them back into place. Uh, let's spin and figure around so you can see it from the back. He does have no articulation here on the tops, but he does have articulation here on the tires. You can move those back and forth as well, also on the ball joints. For his arms, spinning it around again, the figure's arms do hinge out, and you can get them at about a 90 degree angle bend. You can also take then the arms. You can kind of already see the way that the shoulder system works. These pistons and pulleys, though only really just sculpted in place kind of, again, allow Optimus Prime to get a good range of motion, surprisingly, from as intricately sculpted as this guy actually is. The arms rotate all the way around. Just be careful that you don't clip anything in the process, especially these doors. You can bring these doors in a little bit. And the figure does have a bicep swivel. You can swivel that just onto the top there. The figure does have a double hinge on the elbow. There's one and there's two. And, of course, whatever hands you decide to display Prime with are also on ball joints. So you can rotate those all the way around as well. Just making sure I'm not leaving off anything here. When we get to the lower legs, the legs do split out. And these on the sides are also articulated, so you can bring those back and forth as well. You can move those out. If you find that they're getting in the way of things, you can hinge those out. And again, he does have articulation on the tires. These are also on ball joints. The legs do go forward, and they also do also go back. Again, you can split those legs out. There isn't any swiveling happening on the tops of the thighs, but the Optimus Prime does have a nice range of motion when it comes to his knees. One thing I did notice, though, on this Prime is that this panel right here that would be, of course, the back of the tire, this is prone to popping out. If you have had that happen for yourself, I'm just going to remove it for the time being just to show you what it looks like. You can see that there's holes on both the sides that line up to these parts right here. So if you are moving the leg, for example, and it pops off, you just easily snap it back into those designated holes. Uh, these also do move back out as well when it comes to the leg articulation. So that helps as well to aid bringing the figure's legs out. He does have, again, no swiveling happening there. Almost popped the side leg piece off doing that. And when it comes to his feet, you can move his feet up and down this way. And there's also an ankle pivot. And Optimus Prime, if you can believe it, does also have toe articulation as well. So the figure, like I said, is very poseable. I really hope that I didn't leave anything off in the process. Again, this now marks the second Optimus Prime that I've gotten from 3.0, the first one being Optimus Prime, Optimus Prime from the Transformers Bumblebee movie. Even though I really, again, like that one because it's got his Generation 1 roots in his design, I gotta say there's a lot going on here for Optimus Prime. This one's a lot more intricately detailed, has a lot more moving panels, and it does, again, if you are a big fan of the original Bayverse design of Optimus Prime, really does replicate things rather nicely. Positive points is the fact the figure does have as much articulation as he does. Again, really lots of paint that they put into this piece, even to the fact that they did put in those scratched away sections of his paint job, which again doesn't make any sense when he transforms into a truck, but we're going to kind of overlook that for the time being. The figure has tons of different interchangeable options, like for example his ion blasters, his dual swords, both of which can be attached to the forearms of the figure. And again, like when it comes to the designing of the figure, other than just the fact he did have that removable chin piece, which unfortunately still I don't even know the whereabouts of, really think that 3-0 has handled Optimus Prime rather nicely. I might even say that even though I like the, uh, the design of Optimus Prime from Bumblebee a little bit more, I think I like the way that they handled this release of Optimus Prime over the other one that we looked at earlier here on this channel. Now, I for one don't believe a Transformer always has to transform. Yes, I know it lives up to the name Transformer and has to transform into an alternate mode, but really, if you think about it, if you're going to be displaying these as robot modes on your shelf all the time anyways, who cares that it doesn't transform into an alternate mode? We've seen in times before movie tie-in Autobots and Decepticons, in order for them to successfully look like believable cars, planes, or whatever else these things turn into, something always has to be sacrificed in robot mode. And in a case like this, 3-0 are continuing to show what's capable of being produced if you don't mind and you omit the whole transformation part. Yeah, they're called transformers, but if you leave out the transformation step of things, what you can really get with a super detailed, super painted, and well-articulated Autobot. Optimus Prime here looks fantastic. 
I'm looking at this, I'm not disappointed at all that he doesn't transform into a truck because this is the way I would have displayed the figure in the first place. The figure has both the ion blasters as well as the blades that can attach into his forearms. So it gives you two different ways of displaying the figure if you want to. The figure also has swappable mouth plates, which for me at least when it comes to Optimus Prime, I prefer to have the mouth guard as opposed to the talking mouth. I always thought that looked a little awkward on Optimus Prime. He does have the LED eyes, which are a little more difficult, I have to admit, to gain access to. I wish the figure could have had a button switch or something on the front of its helmet where you didn't have to take apart the whole assembly of it to gain access to that light up. One other thing I did mention earlier into this review, and I'll reiterate here in final looks, I really wish that the figure didn't have that removable chin piece. I don't notice it as much when I've got the mouth guard in place, but it seemed to stand out like a sore thumb when I had the talking mouth plate in place instead. I really wish that the chin piece wasn't something that had to be removable or was so easy to lose, which is still is the case. I still don't even know where that chin piece ended up going. That chin piece, the bottom of his face, should have really been part of both the face plates that you change out. So whether you decide to go with the mouth guard or you decide to go with the mouth look, in both of the cases, I think the chin should have been attached to it and not be a separate piece that's susceptible to losing. Other than that, though, absolutely love the look of Optimus Prime. And a big thank you to the folks over at 3.0 that provided this sample of the Transformers Revenge of the Falling DLX Optimus Prime that we could have a look at in this review. What do you guys think of Optimus Prime? And for your video question down below, what's your favorite look of Optimus Prime? It doesn't have to be from the movies. It could be from the cartoons. It could be from the comics. Or it could be of the various looks that he's had in the films. What's your favorite look of Optimus Prime? And if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell notification so you get those friendly reminders of whenever new videos are going to be popping up. And if you guys did want to go back and look at my earlier reviews of other 3.0 releases, there should be a playlist that's popping up shortly here at the end of this video. You can click on that. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.